I'm excited to welcome today Landon Brand, who is a co-founder of REN, a startup focused on climate change solutions. So Landon, welcome. Great to see you. Hi, Laura. Thanks so much for having me. Um, I'm really excited for our conversation today and to talk about REN a little bit here. Yeah, my pleasure. So um, to begin, climate change is an important topic to Generation Z. And Gen Z is something we're thinking about a lot at Signal 360 right now because it's the fo they are the focus of our November issue coming out next week. So um, uh, I found a Pew Research study that noted that, and this isn't going to be that much of a surprise, but to a much greater degree than other generations, Gen Z and millennials see climate change as a top priority, they're more engaged with content around climate solutions, and they are more likely to take personal action. So Landon, your company helps people do exactly that, take personal action around climate change. So can you talk to us about what REN does, how it works, and what your goals are? Yeah, so REN is a website where you can calculate and then offset your carbon footprint. Um, so how it works is basically like, you go to our website, you enter in how much you are driving and flying and all this other sort of lifestyle information that affects your carbon footprint. And then we spit out a number that's like, okay, this is your carbon footprint and, and this is what it means. And this is how you could maybe reduce it. Um, we find that that helps kind of create a context of understanding about how the climate crisis works a little bit and how we all fit into it as we're all parts of this really big system. Um, and then the offsetting component of it is for folks who see their carbon footprint and wanna do something pretty easy about it, we just show them some projects that they can fund that are planting trees or protecting rainforest or otherwise helping with the climate crisis and reducing the amount of CO2 in the atmosphere. Yeah, so that's interesting. That sounds a lot like individuals doing what companies do, buying carbon offsets. Is that sort of the idea? Yeah, there's definitely uh, parallels and especially like this world of carbon offset projects is really interesting where they've existed for um, decades now. Like there's been some regulation existing that says, hey, if you're a, a company and you go over this emissions limits, you have to offset um, your carbon footprint by that amount. It's called cap and trade. Um, and there's also many companies recently, especially that have said, hey, we want to go carbon neutral as a company. We want to take care of our carbon footprint. Like, um, I think the ones, the companies that are really genuine about the climate crisis, usually before going carbon neutral, they say like, here's what we're going to do to reduce our carbon footprint to fully decarbonize. Like besides just, purchasing carbon offsets, here's what we're actually doing to create change. Um, and then we, we on the individual side, it, it's very similar where people can see their carbon footprint, can kind of see how they fit into the climate crisis. And some folks are interested in just saying, hey, let's fund these projects that are helping move the needle on the climate crisis. And also in the same way, you're almost like going into a voluntary carbon tax in a way where you're saying, okay, I'm going to pay for the emissions that I emit. And that's also like a nice incentive for me to reduce my emissions too. That's so, um, that's interesting. So how, how did REN get started? Give us your origin story. Yeah. So we started REN when my co-founders and I were in college at the University of Southern California, and we were we had seen basically this big report came out in 2018 um, from the IPCC that said, hey, global warming is bad and it's like getting worse faster than expected. And basically all this bad stuff about global warming. And we, my co-founders and I said, OK, let's see if we can do something about this. And our, our first idea was basically crowdfunding all these solutions to the climate crisis that were already ready to go today. like we found this amazing resource called Drawdown. They have a website at drawdown.org, which is really awesome. And it basically listed out a hundred solutions to the climate crisis, where if we did all a hundred today, we would more than pull down 
as much CO2 as we're emitting. So in effect, it showed us like, hey, we have all the solutions today. We just need to actually fund them to actually make them happen. Um, like we have the, the technology we need. Sure, more technology is going to make it easier, but let's get started today and start doing something. So we launched REN then in that summer of 2019 and just launched a very simple page. Um, there's a very simple like calculate your carbon footprint component and a few projects you could fund. Um, and to our like almost surprise, people actually signed up and were very excited about it and we're telling others about it. And then we realized, okay, we have something here. Like let's keep doubling down and make it even better and better. And hopefully we can get millions more people to do something about the climate crisis. Yeah, and, and um, I did wanna ask you, how many people do you have using your platform? Yeah, right now we're at about 5,000. So it's got a ways to go to a few million, um, but we're, the nice thing is it kind of does scale kind of exponentially. Um, and we're optimistic about growing a lot over the next few years here. Yeah, well, I think, you know, what that 5,000 I'm sure shows is uh, demonstrates the traction that you need when you go to raise money. And you guys have raised money from Union Square Ventures and Y Combinator founder, Paul Graham. Congratulations. Um, so I wanted to ask you what the pitch is to investors for a climate change startup, because we've heard a lot about, um, you know, VC getting into clean tech in the early 2000s and, you know, really feeling like they got burned by that. So, you know, what's the what's the climate like for climate change startups with VCs these days? Yeah. Yeah. Great question. So for Ren and I think a lot of other climate related startups like that, we benefit by the fact that a lot of folks are starting to care more and more about the climate crisis. And for from our own perspective at Ren, it's like, the purpose has always been, will always be, we want to do as much as we can about the climate crisis and give humanity like the best odds that we can basically. Um, and our investors very much see eye to eye on that, that like this is for a mission. Um, yes, there are kind of financial returns involved here, but we they, they see the long-term view of like, it's much more important to address the climate crisis here. And I think with a lot of companies addressing the climate crisis, that's also what you see. Like if you're, if you're an investor and you think there's a chance of return in a company that is also addressing humanity's biggest crisis, like that's that's very exciting thing to work on, very gratifying to spend a lot of time on those sorts of companies. Um, and for Ren specifically, I'd say that the pitch is something like, hey, we're building this community, this audience of hopefully millions of people who really care about addressing the climate crisis. And that's a really valuable thing, um, especially over a longer periods of time, like these individuals are taking more and more action. And some of that action is like pretty commercial in terms of buying um, like heat pumps or induction stoves and all these sort of more typical commercial things. And so there's, there's lots of uh, ways in addition to carbon offsets where we think we can grow. Um, and I think that's partly what makes it an exciting pitch for an investor. Yeah. So can you talk a little bit more about that, you know, the value and um, so your, your business model and how you deliver back to investors? Yeah. So our business model right now is very simple. We just take 20%, um, like a 20% fee on the carbon offsets sold through REN and that right now is just basically going to fund operations. Like we aren't profitable yet. Um, we have a long ways to go before we can uh, pay everyone's salary just off of that sort of 20% fee. Um, and then long-term, we also think there's a lot of other opportunities um, to monetize as well. Like with almost sort of affiliate revenue type um, offerings where we could, for instance, help people choose a more climate friendly bank. And a bank is a very revenue generating business. Like they make banks make lots of money and that's why they're so big. Um, and they pay a lot for acquiring customers also. So this is a very valuable audience for folks like those banks who want to acquire customers who really care about the climate crisis and might be a perfect fit for what they're offering. So let's talk about who those people are who would be that 
fit for them. Um, basically, how do you how do you describe your user base, and do you refer to them as customers or an audience or users? So yeah. two questions. Yeah, we there. probably say. Yeah, yeah, we probably say uh, members or supporters most often. Um, yeah, REN members are honestly pretty diverse, which has been surprising. Like in terms of age, we're talking everything from college students to folks in, you know, their 60s, 70s and, and upward. Um, generally, it it does track with like what age people are on the internet is, is partly a, a function there. Like we very much operate online and it's a very digital product. So that's part of the part of who makes up the audience is um, how accessible it is to different audiences. Another interesting thing is it's folks all around the world um, who are supporting REN. So I think it's about 60 to 70% US um, citizens or people living in the US who are supporting REN. And then a lot of other folks from the UK, from Australia, Canada, Germany, I think if we had Ren in other languages too, that would open up the audience even more. So we're we're fortunate to see that there are people who care about climate change all over the world now, and with yeah all sorts of ages, and it's a pretty diverse group. Um, so even though we we do have more work to be done on like the getting more people to care about the climate crisis front, um, like especially in America where you have a lot of people who will outright deny the climate crisis. Um, it is cool to see how diverse the existing audience of folks who are really convinced about the climate crisis and ready to take action on it. It's cool to see how diverse that audience is. You have also said that you identify as Gen Z. Um, so when we think about Gen Z, you know, as, as mentioned, sustainability and accountability are two very important factors to them. Have you learned anything about them um, when it comes to climate change? You know, anything in particular that resonates more with Gen Z, with what you're doing, what you've seen on your platform or, 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 or as your own perspective when it comes to the intersection of Gen Z and, and climate change? If you look at who the biggest who the people who are having the biggest impact on the climate crisis are right now in terms of like, who are the activists speaking up about it and really shaping a public opinion and, you know, changing the minds of millions of people around the world to say, hey, the, this is a crisis and we should treat it as such. And we should um, pass a lot of policy that addresses the climate crisis and people should like change what they're doing day to day to an extent um, to deal with the climate crisis a lot of that conversation comes from Gen Z. Like if you look at what Greta Thunberg has done is she has just, she's a 16 year old from Sweden who's an activist and she just decided every Friday I'm going to show up and I'm going to strike and I'm going to talk about climate change until someone actually does something about it. Um, and that's an attitude that has is shared among many other youth activists now. And we really do see them gaining a lot of traction. Like, I think Greta has like millions and millions of Instagram followers. Other youth activists also have a ton of Instagram followers and these big audiences. Um, they're invited to speak at these big events. And so it's like this, this generation, Gen Z, is able to say, we are the ones who are inheriting this planet and everyone else, like you are living in this planet today um, and you are also having the most impact on it, but that impact is maybe affecting future generations a lot more, especially even when you think about how Gen Z is like alive today and they're kind of already becoming adults and um, they're affected so much, but also every future generation that of people on earth is gonna be affected by what we do in the next 50 years here. And I think Gen Z has just done a really good job of telling that story and expressing the importance and urgency of the climate crisis, partly just because they are young and that kind of means they can tell the story of like, look, we are inheriting this planet, like you better take care of it for us because we don't have the power as much in our hands right now. Um, and certainly from the more Ren perspective, we also see a lot of folks in Gen Z who are, you know, just more vocal about climate change. And if they sign up for Ren, they might be the folks who also tell their friends about it and try and form kind of groups in Ren to amplify their impact a bit more. It's like, 
it's almost like we're seeing this is a generation where everyone is is either an activist or is almost like feels pressure to be an activist because we know there are these things wrong about the world and we we want to address them. How do you ensure Ren is perceived as authentic so your users believe they're making real real change? Mm, yeah, I think the the easiest way to be perceived as authentic, I think, is just to be authentic. Um, so we at Ren, one thing. So we have, as a public benefit corporation, we have a legally binding charter, um, and one of our values listed on that charter is to be radically transparent. Like climate change is an issue that affects everyone, so organizations working on climate change should just be totally transparent about what they're doing and why. Um, so we we publish like all how much goes to salary. We don't literally publish every employee's salary because that's very sensitive, but we explain like how we choose compensation. Um, we show what every dollar we spend kind of goes towards, at least in a high level. Um, it'd be a little excessive to like print out every line item of anything we've ever spent money on. Um, maybe one day though, I think there's little harm in being over transparent and it does help us be perceived as more authentic because people can just see, okay, they are putting their money where their mouth is here. They are, you can tell that they're trying to do everything they can about the climate crisis and they are happy to share exactly what they're doing with everyone. So let's get your view on what businesses are doing right and wrong when it comes to sustainability and, you know, efforts and models that you hold up as, as, as doing it the right way. Yeah, great question. Um, I so I think there's there's a lot of ways for a company to do more about the climate crisis or sustainability in general too. Um, on the really good end, I think you have stuff that looks like Patagonia, where basically the company exists because they say we are concerned about how clothes are made and we want to make clothes in a very environmentally friendly way, and we want to be like the leader there, and that's that's really powerful. It's really authentic and it's, it's received well. Like people can tell that Patagonia really just cares about saving the planet and that's core to their mission. It's not just something they tacked on. And the last thing I'd say is lots of companies are not particularly unsustainable. Like for instance, a software company, like it's, we need to get clean energy, but once we have clean energy, like what a software company is doing is probably not affecting the environment that much. And so for those sort of folks who are sitting on the sidelines and seeing like, hey, we want to help, but we, it's not like we're doing anything too bad that we need to totally transform. Um, I think they can look at basically how can we use more clean energy? Um, how can we, and how can we fund that clean energy too? And like, how can we, can we look at our carbon footprint as it is and figure out what's the most important things we can kind of decarbonize and reduce, um, so like air travel might be an example where right now there's there's no real sustainable way to do air travel, but a lot of companies um, do a lot of it. And maybe some of that could be reduced a bit. Like we saw in COVID, maybe you could reduce that a bit and do more video calls. Um, so that would be like another way that companies who are more on the sidelines, but have a bit of a mission still can take more and more action. And I think going carbon neutral is a, another great step there um, that honestly isn't too expensive and doesn't take too much time for most companies too. And, and uh, something else that companies do a lot of, and this is what we talked about, uh, how we kicked it off was, um, you know, carbon offsets. offsets. And so in our final few minutes that we have here, um, I wanted to uh, give you a chance to give us an example, your maybe, maybe your, your favorite example of a company or an organization or a cause that you guys, a project that is part of your portfolio um, that the ca carbon offsets that people buy on your platform go to a as an example of something, um, a way to think about, you know, where, where carbon yeah. off offsets go to. Yeah. So uh, the biggest project we work with um, is a tree planting project in Eastern Africa. And their model is basically saying, let's fund these farmers in East Africa to plant trees uh, on their farms because there's been research done that shows when you're growing trees on your cropland, um, it's a practice called agroforestry, 
it actually usually improves the yields of that cropland. Um, and so you can be growing trees that sequester carbon, um, that increase the yields of your cropland, and even are like a nice either windbreak or maybe a fruit tree, or they're a nice piece of shade on your cropland where you want it. Um, so there's all these sorts of benefits to that project. Um, and it's a very cost-effective way to sequester CO2. And those trees, because they're they're planted by the farmers who live on that land and who know their farm best. Um, those trees usually last a very long time and grow and grow and grow. It's not like with, with some tree planting projects, you run this risk of like, hey, well, we plant these trees and they'll get chopped down like five years from now. Um, but with these projects, because they're planted by the people who are on that cropland already and who are planting trees that they know will be just valuable for years and years to come for themselves. Um, that means that there's lower risks involved with that sort of project. And it creates huge economic benefits where it's usually people who are, you know, somewhat well off in Western countries who are paying for these carbon offsets. And then these mostly subsistence smallholder farmers who are receiving that money from, from these carbon offsets that they, they are growing. And that can be like life-changing amounts of money in, in those communities where you can then like send your children to get educated. Um, so it's just a great example of like a huge win-win that's also very cost effective. And there's this whole system they use to actually go out and measure the tree trunks. So they know how much um, carbon is being sequestered and that process creates jobs in those communities. Um, so it's, it's a really inspiring project for me. And it's one also that, can just keep scaling and scaling and we can keep growing that model. Yeah, great. Well, I, I appreciate your sharing that one in detail with us and informing everybody about REN and this um, new unique approach to helping people take personal action on climate change and the, the, the business model REN and the business potential of it. So um, we've got to wrap up. So thank you so much for joining us today. I really appreciate it. Awesome. Thanks so much for having me. This was fun.